I don't hold grudges, but I do carry receipts. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. We are back with another recap today. And today we're doing a recap of The Real House of Potomac Season 7, Episode 9. Guys, listen, this season, hands down one of their best seasons. I know it's been chaotic on social media, everyone's been arguing, but I think it's been a great season. Like, every single one of them has clocked in. Even Karen, who's usually sleeping, or even Rob, if you guys say are boring. Like, everyone is doing their job, and I feel like that's why this season has been, like, it's just been giving. Like, everyone is clocking in. They're all getting part of the mess. Like, it's just a lot, right? So I'm very, very happy with this cast. I'm happy with the way it's going. Aside from Mia, she's probably the only one I could say, get rid of that bitch. We don't need to see her ever again. But other than that, I like everyone else. And Jacqueline can go too. We don't need her. But everyone else, I like. Even my girl, Sharice, I like that she's a friend of. I think she fits really well as a friend of the show. So we're going to be doing a recap of the episode, which but you already know to do, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Hit the like button if you have not already. It's a free way to support this channel. And then make sure you have a notification bell turned on so you're notified every single time I upload a video. I know I've been MIA for a while. Guys, my laptop literally just broke the other day and it's literally in the shop being fixed, which I usually use my laptop to record my recap. So that's why it's been, it's literally Thursday. So I not to literally record on my phone, which I hate doing. So that's why I'm so late. But recaps are coming, guys, I promise. Just gotta bear with me. So... Um, before we get into this recap though guys, I do want to say this last week and slash weekend has been kind of crazy as far as like uh, Potomac goes as far as me. Like people have been really heated about some of my opinions, which I get it. Like when you're heavily invested in a show, people are not always going to like or agree with you on some of the things you say. It's the point where they're getting angry, they don't even want to watch me anymore, which happens. I mean, I'm a I'm a commentator, like I understand not everyone's going to agree. Some people get mad and I get it. But sometimes when it comes to, it's really only when it comes to Potomac, people take it to like the next level where it's not even just that they don't agree with what I'm saying. They're start labeling all these different names. Like I've been, over the past week, I've been called a colorist, a clown, like all types of things. People can talk about my, um, my ethnicity, how I'm biracial. It's like, if that's like a, supposed to be like a dig or a drag, like, I don't know. It's just, it's so crazy. It's like, guys, like, we all have different experiences. We all have different opinions. We can literally be watching the same exact show, right? The same episode, right? And we take different things out of it. Like we might interpret things that happen different ways. It doesn't mean you're this, you're colorist, or you're racist, or you're just, you're biased or you're stupid. Like it, that does not how it works. Like we all process things differently. So again, we can watch the same thing. We'll have different reactions, right? We can go to a restaurant and I, I can say, oh, this is the best restaurant I've been to. You can say, oh, this is the worst place I've ever been to. Like. That's just how life works. And as an adult, I understand that. So when I watch people who have different opinions than me, I don't get mad and say, oh, fuck that person. They're this, they're that. Like, no, nah, I just, if I'm really turned off by their opinions, I might just stop watching them. Or I say, okay, we can agree, disagree. I don't care what they're saying, but I can still respect their opinion, right? There's so many people who recap these shows. Like some of my favorites, like the Brooke Ashley, Rodney, whoever, and they have different um, opinions than me. They like different housewives than me, but I don't get mad at them for having a different opinion. I understand that we're all adults and we're all gonna have our opinions and we're entitled to it. Like we're on a fucking free platform. Anyone can make a fucking YouTube channel and give their fucking opinions. I don't know why every time I say something, y'all have to like take it to the extreme and like make tweets about me for literally week, like whole week, day after day, I keep getting new tweets about me. Like, oh, that biracial YouTuber, that, it's like, yo, y'all don't have to watch me. Turn the fucking channel. Like you can literally block me on YouTube, block my ass so you don't see my videos. It's that simple. Don't watch me and then, go on your page and start talking shit. It's like, what is the reason? It's not that fucking serious. So again, if you don't enjoy my commentary, don't fucking watch it. There's tons of people who actually do enjoy it. You don't have to be one of those people. I promise you, I'm good. I'm good without you. So I just want to make that clear, but let's get into this recap, guys. So we're starting off the episode and the girls are going to have like a dinner to celebrate Karen's birthday. Now, Mia is supposed to be the host, but she's talking about how, oh, well, Karen said she didn't really care if I did it or not. So like, I'm not going to be hosting this birthday. I'm like, Mia, you are literally one of the worst hosts. First of all, we're going to get into some things that you have planned for this episode because that it was just given low budget, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But Mia, you're just like so entitled and like you really walk around like you're like this boss bitch. Like she walks around like she's literally like, um, I forgot her name. You know, the, the fashion designer from the Devil Wears Prada, like 
she gives that energy, but she's not even that. Like, she's literally low budget. She's a fake CEO. She's not anything. So I don't know why she has this attitude like, oh, I'm the best. Like, yes, I'm the host. So everyone has to listen to me. It's like, girl, let's be real. Every fucking season of this show, the producers pick a new host for a trip. Like, it's not a coincidence that someone comes to know we're talking about, oh, guys, I want to go to Miami for, like, a girl's trip. Like, it's not a coincidence. You already know they're, they have to do trips every single season. So production pretty much just picks someone. Okay, Mia, it's your turn. You haven't hosted. You're going to host. Um, earlier this season or later in the season will be someone else. Last season, Wendy hosts the trip. It's like, that's how it is. Like, they pick a person every single season. Like, every single person on this cast has been a host at one point. Giselle's hosted a trip. Rob has hosted a trip. But, again, it's picked. So, it's like, Mia, you're acting like you're this boss bitch. You're paying for everything. We already know production pays for, like, the food and drinks. So, like, you're not really paying for as much as you say you are. And if, if you are really coming out of pocket for some of this stuff, it just shows how broke you really are because the excursionists you have planned for this trip we're low budget and dumb as hell. Like that boat ride, what the fuck was that? What was that? Like, come on, make it make sense. So anyways, the girls all come downstairs and they're gonna celebrate Karen. Obviously, Wendy is not there because Mia is being a bitch and she doesn't want Wendy to be there. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to call Mia out her name. Like, I don't mean to call these girls bitches, but like, the way Mia's acting is just so disgusting to me. Like, I just, it just does not make sense. Like, you're the one who started the fight, but you're acting like, Wendy owes you an apology or Wendy needs to be ostracized when you're the one who assaulted her twice you threw a drink on her and then you hit her with your purse like why you have this like mentality like oh my gosh no one should be around Wendy because what she did was uncalled for no bitch what you did was uncalled for you can't fight with your words so you had to literally throw drinks and hit people with purses and do x y and z like if you can't fight with your words this is the wrong show for you girl they literally are casting for baddies west and baddies fucking dc like i'm sure you can get on that show if that's what you want to do like if you want to be throwing hands there's a show for you on zeus network or you know love and hip-hop i don't know but this ain't the show for you if you can't fight with your words the same way i would say to you know that bird lady and the same thing i would say to portia if y'all are not intelligent enough to fight with your words this is not the show for you it's just not like this is what this is what they argue about stuff you know they they get into these petty fights, but like they don't ever get fiscal. Like that's just not what we watch for. So it's like Mia, you signed up for the wrong show, girl. You really did. So I don't know. And at this point, you're broke. We found out you're not really a CEO anyway. So it's like we really don't need you to come back for season eight. That's just my opinion, guys. So um, they all do like um, they all recall some of the funny moments they had with Karen over the years. They show like the wig shift from season three. That's literally one of my favorite scenes. Like I really, I cannot watch that scene without dying laughing because that shit was so fucking funny. Um, they have some other funny moments. Um, I forgot who it was. I think it was Giselle who said it was funny when uh, Karen was like clinkety clink, clink and clink when she's talking about Michael Darby. That shit was funny. I'm sorry. That was one of the funniest reads of all time. Like Karen definitely ate that. That shit was funny as hell. Um, so they're all just like laughing about that shit. We have Candace there, obviously. And things start to go left because um, they talk about where Candace and Ashley currently are in their friendship, right? And Ashley and Candace both say, you know, they've kind of tailed their issues for right now. They don't want to really address it. They're just going to put it on hold right now, right? And um, Sharice is kind of confused at, like, why every time they get together, they're always arguing. I'm like, Sharice, girl, you know why. It's because it's housewives. That's what we want. Like, we want them to get into these group scenes and fight. Like, if there was no drama, like, what would we be watching for? I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not watching a show just for everyone to get along and have a good time. Like, it's cute when you have those moments throughout the season, but if that's all it was... I'm sorry, that's boring. Like, let's be real. We watch the drama. It's good TV. Like, we watch see these girls argue and read each other and have these funny moments. Like, if it's just all kumbaya, what the fuck is that? Like, girl, I can just go watch Disney Channel if I want to see that shit. Like, uh, for real. Like, let's be honest. Like, we watch for the drama. Like, y'all can say that you don't. You do. Okay? You do. So, um, so Candace and Ashley kind of get into it because Candace, like, listen... Ashley has came for my marriage. Ashley and Angela actually have came for my husband saying that he's been inappropriate. He's X, Y, and Z. And I just don't, I can't fuck with people like that. Like, I'm just not okay with that. And Ashley, okay, but what, like, what did we lie about? Like, I'm confused. Like, what did I lie about? I'm like, Ashley, girl, you know what you lied about. You know Chris ain't want that. What, what should I call her? You know Chris did not want that not so blessed in the face girl. Let's be real. That's... No, Chris would never go from Candace to that. I'm sorry. That would be a downgrade. Shout out to the girl. I don't know who you are. I have nothing against you, but like, let's be real. You want to sit down here lying on Chris, then, I mean, you put yourself open to being dragged. And girl, you know you what? You ain't got the looks for Chris to be going to you. Like, let's be real. 
Giselle would be more believable than you. Let's be real. And Ashley, you know that was a damn. Even if even if your friend told you that, you should just look at your friend and say, "Girl, like you have to have some type of like intelligence to understand. Like, hey, should I actually bring to the show, or am I gonna look stupid?" Ashley, you chose to look stupid because you know damn well Chris would never go for a girl like that. Like, come on. That girl is not no Beyonce. Like, let's let's stop. Stop the madness. So I'm like, girl, you know what you're lying about. You're lying about Chris flirting with your friend when you know damn well it's not true. Like, where's the receipts? Where's the videos? Where's the photos? Like, there's nothing. Like, every time they show flashbacks of Chris at that event, crickets. He's standing in the corner looking at his phone, minding his own business. Like, y'all just look so stupid. So if I was Kansas, I'd be mad too. Like, girl, like, y'all keep lying to my damn husband. Like... And you think I'm gonna be okay with it? Like, no, like, I'm over it. Like, we're just not doing that no more. So, I forgot who said it, but someone chimes in saying that Kansas is being defensive. And Kansas is like, okay, like, you know, if I if I cuss you all the fuck out, I'm gonna be wrong. But then when I'm trying to say, okay, let's just move on, I'm being defensive. And here comes Jacqueline, like, okay, well, you, you know, here you are dismissing people. And Kansas like, uh-uh, not you, not you. Like, I don't wanna hear it. Like, we don't need to hear from me as representative. I'm like, child, it's not me as representative. A mess. Girl, Jacqueline, you should be embarrassed. And then Jack can go and follow up like, well, you're just mad there's no one to represent you. Girl, not you clapping for being the sidekick. Like, yes, I am a sidekick. What about it? Girl, that's not cute. Like, you should not be clapping for like, that's not like a compliment. Like, me saying, you bitch, you're a follower, sidekick, that's not a compliment. Like, you should be like a main character or a leader and you're okay with being like the sidekick. Like, bitch, hell no. <laughs> I'll be damned if I be someone's sidekick. That would never happen. Like, nah, I'm gonna be a main character. Like, you can still be friends with someone and still both of you guys be main characters. Like, we see Robin and Giselle, whether you want to call Robin a follower or not, she has her flu and she's had it for seven seasons. So clearly she's a main character. Jacqueline, girl, you don't got a flu. You on the sidelines. I'm surprised they even give you a fucking cast photo. You lucky you even got that. Um, so Mia's like, child, Candace, like, let's not do it. So whatever, the, the birthday doesn't go as planned, but Karen's still happy, you know, that they all came together. Of course, she wishes that Wendy was there. We know Mia's being a fucking bitch, so she's not going to let Wendy come there. So they move on to the next day, and the girls are getting ready for the excursion that Mia has planned. So Mia has two separate groups. So she has one group, which is going to be her, um, Karen, I think Giselle and who was the other person that was with them? Was it Sharice? I, I forgot it was it Sharice or Jacqueline. I don't know who the fuck it was, but they're gonna go drive some Lamborghinis and the other group, which is Robin, Candace, Ashley, um, either Sharice or Jacqueline, and then obviously Wendy shows up too. They're gonna be doing like a boat that you have to like literally pedal yourself. I'm like, girl, first of all, I'd be fucking pissed off. Y'all going to drive some Lamborghinis and you got me doing a fucking pedal boat, not even like on a fucking yacht, like drinking mimosas and having a good time. I had to fucking pedal the boat myself. Bitch, if I wanted to do cardio, I'd go to the fucking gym. Like that's not what I signed up for. Like you could have put me on like a jet ski or something like that. Like don't be having me on a boat where I actually have to like do some fucking work. I'm on vacation. Like I'm not going on vacation to go fucking work on my damn legs. Like that's just not what we're here for. So I would be mad as hell. But anyways, so before they get to the excursions, you know, Candace has a little conversation with Sharice and you know, she's talking about her issues with the group. She doesn't like the fact they, they're lying on her husband. Like, she's just not okay with that. She was like, girl, you know, I get it. I get it. Um, they start talking about Ashley's marriage. And Candace like, you know, I feel like, you know, Ashley's projecting because, you know, she, she has a fake marriage or she's going through, like, a fake divorce or whatever. And she was like, no, I don't I don't think it's fake. Like, I kind of actually think it's real. And Candace like, you really think that, that divorce is real? And she was like, you know, not at first, but, like, now I kind of do think it's real. I'm like, you're Sharice, girl. Shut the hell up. I actually like Sharice, but I'm like, Sharice, oh gosh, like, it pains me to say, like, I want you to come back, and then you're just, you're just saying stupid shit like this. I'm like, Sharice, no, come on, you know better, girl. This shit's fake as hell. Nothing that Ashley's saying about her divorce is adding up. Like, let's be real. Like, stop it. Just stop. So anyway, so they break up to their, to their two groups to do their little excursions. Mia, it was low budget. I'm sorry. Everything about this excursion day was low budget. Like, even just driving the Lamborghinis, I'm like, okay... Like, these girls are supposed to be rich. Like, you guys never ha drove a luxury car before. Like, especially me. Like, me, aren't you, like, a CEO? You make, like, what, $450,000 a year, allegedly? Like, you never driven a Lamborghini? You don't have a luxury car? Like, I'm sorry. That's just stupid. Like, that's just a waste of my fucking time. Like, I don't want to drive it. I want to buy it. Like, I'm not going to just drive a car. Like, I want to actually, like, buy it. Like, why would I, like, tease myself like that? Like, let's do something fucking fun. Like, 
I'm sorry, like, I'm a huge foodie, like, let's go out to a good restaurant, let's do, like, some wine tasting or some tequila tasting, like, something, like, I want to get out and do something, like, crazy, or, like I said, do jet skis, like, something that's actually fun, that shit is not fun to me, like, I'm, and you're driving, like, through the city, like, you can't even, like, really go fast because there's all these fucking stoplights, like, what is the point, I, I don't get it, so then, the other group is even worse than the fucking Lamborghinis, the other group has to fucking do a fucking paddle boat, like, they literally have to, like, do them stuff. I'm like, girl, again, this is low budget. For you to be calling someone's video low budget, this is very low budget, man. And you want to act like you're the best host? Like, I'm the host. It's my rules. Girl, t you can t you keep your damn trip. I should have just stayed home because nothing about this trip has been fun. It hasn't been entertaining. It hasn't been, like, memorable. Like, it's just been low budget from start to finish. So, Mia, you should be embarrassed to even be calling yourself a host. Like, if I were you, I'd be like, listen, I'm not the host. Let me just drag in a co-host so if it's, like, low budget that we can just blame that co-host, like, because I'm sorry, man, this is just a no, so, there, um, so the other girls get to the little boat, and of course, you know, Candace wanted to invite Wendy, and she's, she's in the car, they're driving, and Candace is asking everyone if they're okay with inviting, um, if she invites Wendy, and, you know, of course, she has to ask Robin, because Robin has an issue with Wendy, and Robin's like, you know what, whatever, like, I, uh, like, whatever, like, it's clear Robin doesn't want her to come, but she's like, whatever, do what you want to do, I'm like Robin, girl, it's not that serious. Like, I get you don't like Wendy, but like, I don't understand why you're acting like Wendy. Just something like that was so atrocious. Like, you just can't be around her. Like, I get it. There's people you don't fuck with in the group, but you guys know this is a show. Gets to film together. Like, you can't just exclude her from everything going forward. Like, like she didn't do anything wrong. Like, I feel like it was different with the whole Monique situation because they pretty much did exclude her for the rest of the season. But Monique literally actually put her hands on someone. So like, the fact that you you guys were okay with ostracizing Monique, but you won't ostracize Mia. And then you're acting like Wendy was the one who, like, th like threw a punch. Like, I just don't get it all. Like, I don't get it. And y'all know I love Robin, but, like, I'm just so confused. Like, I just don't get it. Like, I I, I don't, I get not want to be around people. But, like, you know, like, you can't ice her out forever. Like, it's just, you got to film a show. She's a cat. She's a main cast member. You have to have her around no matter what. And, you, Robin, it's not just about you. Like, she's friends with other people in the group. So, like, you can't be mad when she comes around. Like, that's just reality. So, Candace invites Wendy. You know, Wendy arrives and they're all, you know, on little excursions, you know, having not a great time. And <laughs> Ashley asked Robin about her wedding plans, right? She's like, you know, are you doing a destination wedding? Like, what are you thinking? Robin's like, you know, it's going to be very, very small. And then she kind of leaves at that. And Ashley's like, Wait, like, why are you not telling us like, what's really going on? Robin's like, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't really want to talk about my wedding in front of people who really don't care about me. And Ashley's like, no, everyone here cares about you. Robin's like, no, they don't. That's okay. Listen, <laughs> I'm with Robin on this. Like, girl, y'all don't all fuck with me. Let's be real. Wendy doesn't fuck with me. I don't think she really cares about my damn wedding plans. I'm not about to share my intimate wedding plan details with someone who doesn't fuck with me. And I've seen people online getting mad that, like, oh my gosh, Robin, you're so petty. You're so this. You're so that. Like, you're just trying to ice Wendy out. You're trying to make sure she's not involved. I'm like, y'all stop that shit. Because, let's be real, Wendy was the same person last season who basically said Robin had a fake-ass marriage. So, like... If someone tells me I have a fake ma fake marriage or fake relationship, I'm not going to be telling them my wedding plans. Like, why? I'm sure Wendy did not lose any sleep over not knowing Robin's plans. Like, I don't think Wendy really gives a fuck. So, I don't know why y'all give a fuck so much if Wendy doesn't give a fuck. Like, some of y'all be going online acting like you have to cape for all like all these your favorite houses. Like, if, like, as if they can't defend themselves. It's like, nah, Wendy's a grown-ass woman. I feel like if she needs to defend herself, she will. She didn't need you guys going online talking about... It was so wrong what you did to, like, Wendy's a grown-ass woman, guys. Like, she knows what she's filming. Like, I don't think she's losing sleep over not knowing Robin's wedding plan. I don't think she gives a fuck. If she really thinks her relationship with uh, Juan is fake, I really don't think she cares about a fucking wedding. Knowing that she's not going to be invited anyways. Like, let's be real. She would not be invited, so I don't think she cares. So, um, so anyway, so we move on from that. Again, very low budget. I was not impressed whatsoever. Now, when the girls get back to the house, um... They have to get ready to go to dinner, right? Because Mia has a dinner plan for them. So they're all getting ready. They all head to dinner. Of course, you know, Ashley wants Wendy to be there. And she asked Mia if she can invite her. And they're like, no, nah, like, we don't want Wendy included. Like, she just, we don't want me, uh, Wendy to come to the dinner with us. I'm like, girl, what? why? Why can't she fucking come? Like, I don't understand what's the big fucking deal. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Like, it's just dumb. Um, so as they get to dinner, or actually, sorry. I don't have my notes. So I'm like, I'm kind of like going off my memory. Before they go to dinner, Robin is talking to Giselle. And she's like, Giselle, I need you to hear something that just came up, right? 
So I was just like, what? What is it? So Robin plays a portion of one of Candace's um, Instagram lives. And in this live, Candace is saying how these bitches are fake. They're not loyal. They're this and they're that. They're just trying to peddle their businesses across town. Like she's just being super shady or whatever, which is typical for a Candace live stream. If you ever watch one of Candace's live, typically they're shady. I mean, it is what it is. I'm just, just the truth. So Robin's pissed off by this because she feels slighted by this because she's like, listen, why is she talking about everyone? Like, I get you have issues with the group, some people in the group, but like, what did I do? Like, Robin's taking it very personal. And I know y'all were dragging my girl Robin, like, literally through the mud because she played this live stream or clearly she didn't watch the whole thing. But not to, uh, listen, I know y'all gonna be mad, but not to defend Robin too much. I mean, she looks stupid. She did. But not, in her defense, she didn't say she saw this on her Instagram page. So if you actually go to Kansas' Instagram page, this live was actually up like the full thing. She said she um, she saw the video on a blog page, and you already know how blogs are. You th they're not gonna play a whole one hour live stream on a blog page. They're gonna literally cut out the pieces that are like most important. I'm sure whoever sent her this blog it had the video, but it was like pretty much only cuts the portion of canceling everyone's like a bitch and disloyal and all these things. But on the actual full live. Cass actually did say some nice things about Robin. She talked about her um, embellished business, saying that she has a hat, um, that she's going to support Robin's skincare business when it comes out. So Cass was actually saying really nice things about Robin. But of course, if you're looking at it from a blog page, they're not going to include those good portions because they're trying to be messy. Let's be real. So, and y'all know, these girls have the alerts on their phone. Every time they get a blog page or a blog goes up about Potomac, they have to like watch or they have to read it or see what's going on. So. I'm almost positive Robin did not see that whole clip. Because, I mean, let's be real. If she, if she saw that whole video, she would not be mad at Candace. Because clearly Candace gave her problems in that in that live stream. So it's like, Robin, girl, you kind of shot yourself in the foot. Because if you had seen the whole thing, you would have known that's not really... It wasn't what you thought it was, right? But Robin's pissed off. She's like, oh, I'm about to share this with the whole group. Because she wants to talk about everyone being fake. I think the whole group needs to see this. I'm like, Robin, girl... Just say you try to be messy and move on. You don't have to make excuses like, oh, well, you know, she kind of mentioned everyone. So I feel like this needs to be a conversation with everyone. No, Robin, you're trying to be messy. You're trying to get, you know, a storyline going. You're trying to get, you know, some drama happening. And that's all it is. And I'm not mad at you because, again, I love the drama. So anyone who's willing to, you know, curate these scenes that we get, these group scenes where we get a bunch of drama flying, I'm okay with it. So I'm not even mad about it. But just be real with what it is. Like, I mean, we see each other. I know what it is. You don't have to, like literally like plainly say it, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to, you know, create a good scene and you did. I mean, whether you're being dragged for it or not, you still create a really great scene. So I'm not mad at you. So they get to dinner and as they're sitting down, Ashley kind of excuses herself for a second and she calls Wendy and she's like, Wendy, hey, you know, we're at this restaurant. I really think you should be here. You know, we're trying to celebrate Karen. So like, it's pretty much close to your hotel. So just come over here, right? Now, of course, that was not gonna fly over well with Mia because Mia's being petty. I don't know why. Um, so as they all sit down, of course, Wendy arrives. And Mia's not happy. She's like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Like, I don't understand. And Ashley's like, well, I just felt like, you know, I should invite Wendy because, like, she is a part of this group. She's here in Miami. Like, she took time away from her family to be here. So, like, I feel like she deserves to be here. And it's supposed to be for Karen. And Mia calls Ashley a brat. I'm like, girl, Mia, shut the hell up. Don't want to act like a brat is you because you were literally the other one who started all this shit trying to be messy about Peter and now you want to sit here trying to ostracize Wendy. It, it literally makes no sense. And Robin, I love you, girl, but I really wanted you to give the voice reason to say, hey, Mia, like, you're going too far. Like, I get that you don't fuck with Wendy. But, like, just, you can at least admit, like, okay, like, it ain't that serious. Like, okay, we we ostracize her for one day, but we don't do it literally the whole fucking vacation. Like, at some point, you got to be like, okay, it's not that serious. She can come. It's just fucking dinner, right? But they're all being petty because they don't fuck with Wendy. I'm like, child. Mia's a damn bully. She's been a bully since last season. Like, when she was bullying fucking Candace about her video, now she's trying to bully fucking Wendy. It's like, girl, get this girl off my fucking channel. Like, I don't get it. Now, do I think it's colorism at play? I, I mean, I don't really know. I think that Mia's just a fucking bitch. And to be honest, Mia and Wendy don't have a good history. And not to take Mia aside, but if you go back to the last season, the beef between Mia and Wendy really started with Wendy when Wendy was being shady to Mia for no damn reason. Like, she had just met the girl... She's trying to like surgery shame her and act like, oh, well, you got all that, then I didn't get all that. Like, to me, the beef started with Wendy, but it's, I feel like Mia's the one who's carrying it on. Like, yeah, y'all didn't have a good last season, but like, y'all came into this season, I mean, pretty much neutral. Like, Wendy didn't have an issue with you, it seemed like. I mean, I don't know if Mia had an issue with Wendy, but like, they seemed pretty cordial up until this point. So it's like, at this point, Mia, you're just choosing to be mad because Wendy's clearly ready to move on and you're, you just don't want to. You're just, you're going to holes over her head forever. So I don't know if it's colors, but I think Mia is just 
She's just a bully. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is, guys. I think they just don't like Wendy. And it's just, you know what it reminds me of at this point? Even though I don't fuck with Wendy, I'm not really a Wendy fan. It kind of reminds me of Beverly Hills, like how the girls treat Sutton. Because if you guys watched last season, if one girl, one girl, one girl like the Fox Sports doesn't fuck with Sutton, they all don't fuck with Sutton. Like, they all, like, chime in to bully her. Like, we had Diana bullying her, Kyle, fucking Lisa, Erica, like, all these bitches did not fuck with Sutton, so they all pretty much ganged up on her. I feel like it's the same thing right now with Wendy, like, you know, Giselle doesn't like her, Robin doesn't like her, Mia doesn't like her, like, so they're all kind of, like, band together to, like, kind of, like, fuck with her, right? Typical bully behavior, like, I don't think it's, that's why I'm like, I don't know if it's colorism or if they're just being bullies, because, I mean, it's not like they hate Wendy from day one, like, if we go back to season five, Robin and Giselle were pretty much cool with Wendy, they had no issue with her, the only one who really had an issue with, with Wendy was ashley and then karen really karen had first of all karen had an issue with wendy for no damn reason like it really made no sense even to this day i still don't understand what karen's issue was with wendy in season five like it just did not make sense to me i, I don't know but anyways that's besides the point so obviously me is a little like pissed off but it is what it is when he's here and she's here to stay so wendy's like listen I'll, i want to say something to the group i do want to say that to me like i apologize for you know whatever part i played in our feud like i if i hurt your feelings like i, I apologize for it. like that's just not what i meant to do and i'm like i want to move on i'm like okay when he when he being the bigger person apologizing and mia sitting there like she can't be talking to me like i don't know who she's talking to i'm like girl she's literally talking to you. she literally said your name she addressed you directly like why can't you just take the apology and move on like what are you mad at you are the one who hit her you assaulted her like this is why I'm so con like I'm really just baffled. Like I don't understand what the issue is. Like Mia, you hit her. If anyone should be mad, it should be her being mad at you. You should be the one who doesn't have anywhere to stay. You staying in a separate hotel because you're violent. Wayne didn't even touch you. She didn't throw no drinks at you. She didn't hit you with her damn purse. That was you, Lily. You, Mia. You. That was you. So why are you like so mad? And when he still even, even though she didn't need to, she still apologized to you, and you still won't accept it. Like, I don't get it. It just makes no sense to me. Like, girl, make it make sense. Like, I don't understand what this, what is the, what is the issue? I don't, I don't get it. It's just not adding up. So, once they move on, they table that because Mia just clearly does not want to move on. Robin decides she's going to be, I don't know, the Beats representative, like the uh, Beats by Dre. She pulled out a Beats by Dre little um, pill, like Bluetooth speaker thing. And she's like, well, listen, I got something for everyone. I need, I think everyone needs to hear this because it's really, really important. And Kat's like, child, what is this? Like, what's going on here? So, you know, Robin connects her phone to the Bluetooth or whatever, and she plays Candace's Instagram live from the blog page, right? And we see, like, the full thing of Candace saying all these bitches are disloyal, they're, like, they're this, they're that, just being shady, right? Now, Robin's like, I find it really interesting that you mentioned all of us. Like, I don't understand, like, why would you, like, why would you say that? And Candace, of course, feels like she just got, like, attack out of nowhere like she feels bombarded by this fucking sneak attack by robin she's like listen rob like why would you even play us like i don't understand like you were clearly trying to um what i forgot what word she used but basically she was trying to trap her into this like it was being robin you were being messy that's really all it is and you did not give Kansas a heads up like i'm confused at why robin's being so hostile towards Kansas. like i don't because they're they're like up until this point like Kansas and robin were like really good friends like not just on the show, but off the show as well. Like, which you're gonna find out later in this episode when they get into like their big fight in the club. But just know, as far as like Robin and Candace's relationship, Candace's relationship with Robin was was better than anyone else on the show. Like, aside from um, Robin and Giselle, the second most strongest friendship on the show was actually Robin and Candace. And I know y'all like to say Wendy is Candace's closest friend, their besties. Like, Wendy has her back, and Candace has her back, etc. Just because y'all think it does not mean it's true, because the truth is, Candace was actually closer to Robin out of everyone, and that includes Wendy. She's way closer to Robin than she is with Wendy or anyone else. And that's just, I'm sorry, y'all don't want to hear it because y'all want to make the narrative that they're like, you know, tag team and besties, but that's just not true. Like, Candace and Robin have like a really, really good friendship, a very strong friendship. In fact, even even after this, they uh, finished filming this season. Robin was the only one who actually went to Candace's Deep Space show. The only one, which says a lot because as much as y'all claim Wendy is Candace's best friend and all this and she has Candace's back, I literally told you guys last night, I don't know if you guys remember, but last night I told you guys, 
I don't think Wendy actually has Candace's back. I'd never see Wendy actually like really sticking up for Candace the way she should. Um, and I said, I've always said that. So it just, it's funny to me that you guys think that they're so close when Rob was literally the only one on this cast that actually showed up to Candace's event to support her. Like, where was Wendy? Where was Cam? Where was Ashley? Where was Mia? Like, none of those girls showed up to her concert to support her. And that's the truth. And that's that's not me making it up. You guys can research it. Like, I literally was just talking to Chris. Like, he even said, Robin is the only person who showed up to the event. So it's like, yeah, they have a real friendship. Um, so, of course, Candace feels, like, blindsided. She's hurt by this. And she's like, listen, like, I know I said you guys are disloyal, but Robin, you're really the only one I wasn't talking to. Like, I feel like out of everyone, you are the only loyal person. Which, again, I mean, listen to what... Candace saying this on her own mouth. Like, I don't even have to like, interpret it. Like, she's literally saying... Robin is the only loyal one on this cast. So she's telling you right there, she doesn't think Wendy's loyal. She doesn't think Karen's loyal. She doesn't think Ash, she doesn't think Giselle's loyal. She didn't think those girls are loyal. So, I mean, what do you, y'all can't argue with me about this. Candace said it herself. She said it out of her own mouth. So, you know, Candace, like, you know, I think that Ashley is definitely disloyal. She's a snake. You know, Giselle is disloyal. She's a snake. Karen, I really wasn't really including you in that. Um, she thinks me as a snake. Like, she thinks all these girls are snakes, right? And, Ashley's like, okay, so you're not including Karen, but you were telling me that, you know, Karen was sleeping with someone else aside from her husband. And Karen's like, well, what are you talking about? I never said that. I'm like, girl, child, this is one time, Karen, so I don't feel bad for you because I really said, like, when you invite her to your house early in the season, I'm like, why is she invite this girl to her house? Like, it's cute that you guys want to, like, move on and try to, like, you know, put your differences aside and like put it behind you and try to build something new. But like building something new like this, like when someone's hurt you as much as Ashley has hurt Candace and like done some vile things to her, like Ashley has done to Candace as far as like writing that statement for Monique. If you're gonna try and move forward, like I think you need to start from ground zero. Like build your way up to like a, an actual friendship. Like you don't just immediately invite her over to your damn house. Like Ashley has shown that she's not trustworthy She's a snake, and she's willing to do Giselle bidding, like, anytime. Like, if Giselle calls up Ashley, Ashley, I need you to do this. I need you to be messy and go say this. I need you to do... Like, Ashley's going to do it, okay? Giselle is her puppeteer, and Ashley is Pinocchio, right? So, I'm like, why would you even trust her? Like, why, number one, why did you invite her to your house? Number two, why would you trust her enough to be telling her rumors and gossip about someone else on the cast? Like, you think she's not going to tell Karen what you're saying? Like, come on. Like, even I do. I'm like, girl, you shouldn't have seen this coming. So, Karen's like, yeah... No, I, like, I never said that, Karen. I never said that. Girl, you said it. They have it on camera. You said it. And I don't care. Like, I know you were on Twitter saying, oh, it, she took it out of context or she didn't provide the full context. No, girl. Like, you were being messy. And you were saying, like, we've seen the scene. Like, you were being messy. And you were talking about rumors about Karen seeing someone else. So, it is what it is. Like, there's no, like, oh, but, the, you know, you need the full con like, the context where you were being messy. It is what it is. Just own it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, you guys all talk shit about each other. Like, I don't understand what the big deal is. So, Karen gets mad. She's like, nah, I'm not doing this. Like, y'all keep talking about me. You keep talking about my marriage and this and that. Like, she's, she gets heated and she ends up leaving the table. And I'm like, Karen, why are you getting so mad? Like, if it's not true, why are you getting so mad? Like, you're so mad people are talking about rumors about you, but you're okay to talk about rumors about everyone else. Like, last time you were talking about Giselle having STDs, this, that, that. And then you want to say, oh, well, those are just rumors I heard. So you can talk about rumors about people, but no one else can talk about rumors about you? That's not how this works, Karen. Like, Every single person on the show has been subject to rumors, whether about themselves or about their husbands or family. You're no different. Like, you're not special. Like, you're on this cast. You're not above them. I know you like to call yourself the Grand Dame, but you're on the same show as everyone else. It's the same thing I used to say about Nina. Like, Nina always acted like she was better than everyone else. I'm like, girl, you're on the same show as everyone else. Like, you're on the same show as Kenya and Kenya. Like, you can't be better than them when you're on the same show. Like, even if you have, like, a successful business... Clearly, it's not that successful because you still want to be in the show with everyone else. So it's like you don't clearly don't even matter how much money you have. Like if you're on a show, you're no different than them. You're equal. You all you all film the same reality TV show. It's not like it's not Karen, Karen the Grand Dame, and Friends. It's the Real Housewives of Potomac. It's not the Real Housewives of Karen. It's Real Housewives of Potomac. So it's like, girl, you're gonna be subject to rumors too. And if you if they're not true, like why are you getting so mad? I don't, I don't get it. So she storms off, and Cam's like, no, I never said that. Like, this is why I don't fuck with you. Like, you're always doing some shady-ass shit. Ashley's like, that's not what it is. And Ashley's like, no, you said it. You said it. I'm like, child. Fucking mess. So Karen comes back, and of course, she's pissed off. Uh, I'm like, Karen, girl, get over it. It's a rumor. If it's not true, move on. That simple. And you know what I noticed? This has nothing to do with the scene at all. Um, but every time they talk about 
the rumors about Chris like wanting to or, or hitting on other people. You see how Giselle just sits there quietly. Like Giselle is so strategic and calculated that she does things and then she does act like nothing ever happened. Like since since the moment she put out that rumor about Chris being like inappropriate with her, you see like she doesn't even want to talk about more. She has she's moved on. She doesn't even bring it up anymore. She just sits there like silent. Like she literally just started the fight and then she just sits there and watch everything burn. Like that's literally what's happening. Like every time he gets brought up or that thing gets brought up, it it becomes like a Candace versus Ash thing. But Giselle just sitting there like, I ain't got nothing to do with this. I'm like Giselle, literally, you started this shit. Like this is literally you. Like that's why she's still on the show, guys. Because y'all can hate Giselle all you want, but she knows what the fuck she's doing. Like this happens every scene. Like she'll she'll bring out a rumor about someone. She'll watch the, that other person like implode and like get so hostile and mean and like angry at her. And then she just sits back and just like lets it all happen. Like, oh, okay, well, I'm already over. Like, why are we still talking about it? I'm just like, because you are the one bringing up these rumors. Like, why are we not talking about it? She's like, no, but I'm over it. I'm like, okay, I said what I have to say. Let, let's move on. I'm like, Giselle, child, you really be having them trigger. Like, they be writing think pieces about you. The fans of you like send you death threats and like doing all this and you're evil. There's literally a video on YouTube of someone saying light skinned devils. Like, you got them literally all in a tiff. Like, they can't even, like, watch a show and enjoy it anymore. Like, they just hate watch at this point because they just cannot stand you, Giselle. Or Robin. They can't stand Robin either. Giselle and Robin, I mean, y'all just getting the most hate this season. Some of it is deserved, some of it's not. I mean, Giselle, I think it's all deserved. Robin, it's like some of it's deserved, some of it's not. But it's like, hey, I mean, y'all making a good TV show. So, as much as I don't fuck with Giselle, I mean, she does what she always does. Like, I, she's not doing anything different this season than she hasn't done in the past six seasons. So, that's all I gotta say. So, yeah, they pretty much end dinner. Um, it starts raining, like a hurricane coming through or something. I don't know. So, Giselle goes back to her hotel because she's old as hell. She don't want to hang out and have fun. So, the other girls go out to um, the club to have fun, right? Now, we have Candace being the narrator, and she's like, listen... Something must have happened because everyone's actually getting along and having a good time. Like, you know, she's taking like selfies with Mia, um, Wendy and Robin having a good conversation. Wendy was like telling Robin that she loves her. I'm like, girl, you love her? Interesting. Listen, y'all be, this is what I mean. Like, y'all be going up for Wendy so much on social media and then y'all end up looking stupid when the show airs. Cause like, y'all like, Robin hates Wendy so much. She's this, she's that, or you know, Mia's this and that. And then here you have Wendy not only apologizing to Mia, but in the same episode saying how much she loves Robin, I'm like, okay, as much as y'all say Robin's evil and she hates Wendy, but why is Wendy over here saying that she loves Robin? Like, you don't see Robin talking about, oh, I love you, Wendy. Like, no, nah, it's Wendy. Like, I, you know what I think it is? This is my honest truth about Wendy, right? I don't think Wendy's a bad person at all. I actually really enjoyed her this episode because she's, you know, being the bigger person, she's apologizing. I think that Wendy, in an attempt to gain fans, she was willing to... Or not willing to, but she was okay with her friendship with Robin and Giselle deteriorating because she knows that if she goes against Giselle and Robin, it's going to gain her fans because everyone hates those two, right? I mean, that's what happened last season. Like, no one cared about Wendy season five and season six. When everyone knew that she was going to have an issue with Giselle, they immediately jumped on, I'm a fan of Wendy now. Didn't care about her season five, but this season I'm going to like her. And then they pretty much rolled that train all the way to season seven, right? But I think with Wendy, I don't think, I think what she doesn't understand is... You may think it's just a TV show and you may think, okay, you know, part of the formula is like we get into fights in the next season, we're cool again. That may work on some franchises franchise or some housewives, but that doesn't work with everyone. Like, Robin and Giselle are not the type of to be like, you can just come for them or you get into arguments with them and they're just going to like immediately forgive you. Like, especially Robin. Robin holds a grudge, so she's going to hold on to that for a while now. Like, her and Ashley, when Robin and Ashley first had their issues like season one to season two... Robin just didn't just forgive Ashley right away. Like, it took them some time to get to an actual friendship. So, same thing is going to happen with Robin and Wendy. Like, Re Wendy, I think you kind of miscalculated, like, how long this feud was actually going to go on for. Because I don't think, in my heart of hearts, I really don't think that Wendy hates Robin or Giselle. I really don't. Like, I know it comes across that way, but I think that she actually likes them. Now, the problem is, like, you kind of went in on them a lot, like, pretty hard last season. Like, you're not going to just be able to... Flipping and be like, okay, we can be friends now. Like, it just does not work like that with every single person. Like, some people might be okay with it. Some people might not. So, Robin Giselle, they ain't fucking with you right now. Especially because the way you go on social media calling them colorist. Well, not calling them colorist, but liking tweets about them being colorist. It's like, okay, you're definitely not going to be friends with them anytime soon. Because now you're labeling these something that could be very detrimental to not only their character, but their businesses. Like, who the fuck wants to buy some 
like products from someone that is labeled a colorist like no one like that's bad for business so it's like y'all putting these tweets out there or liking these shady tweets about your cast members and then you expect them to be your friend it's like that's not how this works and not just Wendy Candace is the same thing and I love Candace but like if you really care about Robin or I mean you don't fuck with Giselle I'm okay with that don't I don't fuck with Giselle either so I don't I don't blame you for that but as far as Robin goes like if you're really Robin's friend outside the show like you might not want to like tweets about her being a colorist or her being this and that because it comes across like okay yeah we might be cool outside the show but for for the purpose of the show I'm gonna like hype up this narrative because you know that's what the fans are saying they're saying they think Robin's color so I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on that and go along with it, but I'm like, no, nah, like, Robin's your real friend outside of the show, like, she's the only one who showed up to your fucking DC show, none of the other girls showed up, like, you gotta be careful with, like, what you do or what you post on social media, because it can, it can come back to bite you, it can, and if you don't think Robin's gonna see it, trust me, she sees it, and I don't know, like, I actually want them to be on good terms again, because I love Robin and Candace, I want them to be friends, like, they had a very strong friendship, I would hate to see it get ruined over a TV show, like, they need to talk privately, not even on the show, just talk privately amongst themselves and work on their issues. Like, Candace, if you feel some way about Robin, express how you feel and then vice versa. Robin, express how you feel about Candace and then work it out. Like, that's one friendship I don't want to see, like, ruined by the show. Like, I don't want it. I love my girls, Robin and Candace. I don't want to see you guys fighting. Make up. Have a Ponderosa. Like, do what you got to do. Hug it out. I don't know. I don't know what else you guys do. Like, just... Figure it out, guys. Figure it out. Because I love you guys together. Like, it's a cute friendship. So, yeah, that's pretty much um, where that dinner ends. They all go to the club. And then on the way home, Candace is upset at Robin. She's like, I can't believe you fucking did that. Like, that was fucking nasty what you did. Like, you were, like, my only real friend. I can't believe you did that. So, Candace is obviously, like, irate. And she's very upset. And as she should be. Like, if Robin is really your good friend, I can understand why you felt blindsided by her. Like, I probably feel blindsided too if that happened to me. So, I don't even... I can really understand why Candace is upset. And again, you have to notice what Candace is saying. What did Candace say in this scene? She said Robin was her only real friend. So that literally means she doesn't think the other girls are her real friends. That includes Ashley, Wendy, Karen, all of them girls. She only considers Robin her real friend. I mean, again, that came out of her mouth twice this episode. So that's just not me making it up. That's what she said. Um, so I kind of, I really felt bad for Candace. Robin was like, well, no, like... You're mad at me, but you're the one who's, like, saying this stuff on a live stream. I'm like, Robin, what Cam sure did was, like, girl, I had the whole live stream. Let me play the whole thing for you because clearly some of whoever posts this is trying to be shady because that's not even the full concept of what I said. I would just show Robin the whole thing. Like, and it probably would have worked itself out and been over with. I mean, I don't know if she does it later on, but as far as we've seen, they, I don't think Robin's seen the whole fucking clip up until that point. So I'm like, girl, this is just a huge misunderstanding. Like, y'all need to work it out. But again, I understand why Candace is hurt by this. Because she's like, no, like, I'm, I, I love you, Rob. Like, I never said anything bad about you. Like, why would you do this to me? So it, it ends up in a fucking mess, a disaster. Um, that's pretty much where the episode ends, guys. And of course, we get the mid-season trailer, which I talked about last week. Um, let me know what you guys thought of this episode. I thought it was a 10 out of 10. Like, the drama was literally from start to finish. I, I loved it. Me and a girl get low budget. That was a very low budget trip. You're supposed to be in Miami. And that's what you give us? Like, nah. Like, Miami is very luxury. Like, we see in the Real House of Miami how they give us a show. And they go on these, like, really nice um, dinners and, you know, vacations, excursions. Why couldn't you do that, Mia? Why couldn't you do that? Like, come on. Like, what was that? So, Mia, you're low budget. You're getting um, put over there in the corner on timeout. Because, no. Bad host. Jacqueline, you're over there because you want to be Mia's representative. You don't want to really add nothing to the show. You go over there. And you're weird anyways for sleeping with me as ex-boyfriend. Like, that's fucking weird. Girl, go over there in the corner. Um, Ashley, go back in the corner and listen. One thing I get mad about with the fans is y'all are so quick to forgive Ashley for everything that she did. Like, just because Ashley's being nice to Wendy does not mean she's a good person. Like, y'all just give her... Y'all like, oh, we like Ashley now. Like, the only people I like this season are Candace, Wendy, and Ashley. I'm like... Y'all like Ashley just because she's being nice to Wendy. But, like, what about what she did to Candace? Like, did you guys forget about that? Or all other things that she's done over the past few seasons like you're just gonna forget that like just because she's being nice to wendy we're gonna give her a pass no i'm not giving that bitch a pass go in the corner with me and jacqueline go in the corner like get get out we, we don't fuck with you giselle you ain't really say much this episode so like you can like stand you don't have to sit in the corner but you can like stand over there like away from me a little bit robin <sighs> robin go stand with giselle yeah you know i love you so i'm not gonna put you in the corner with those girls but like go stand with giselle and candace Come over here. You, you come over here. Karen. Mm, Karen. I don't know. Karen. I don't know where to put Karen right now. Karen. 
Stay over there at Giselle and Robin, because I'm iffy with YouTube, but Candace, you, you can sit here with me. You you can sit here with me. Wendy, you can sit here with me, too. You two, you two are good this week. You two sit beside me. Y'all good. Y'all didn't do nothing wrong. You guys get some, you know, champagne, whatever you want. I got some tequila on the back. Like, y'all can have whatever you want. Y'all are in trouble. And people in the corner, y'all have been there for a long time. Giselle, Karen, and Robin, y'all gotta make it up to me. If y'all wanna sit over here and get some champagne and some, like, hors d'oeuvres and all that, Y'all gotta make it up to me next episode, because y'all ain't do it. So anyways, that's it for this recap, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back again very soon for my Salt Lake City recap, hopefully. And then Miami just came out today, so I don't know how I'm doing that this season, because I know last season I did like a live stream, but I don't have my laptop. So I might not be able to do live streams for a while. Um, hopefully I get my laptop back this week, but I don't know. So we'll see. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Please hit the, hit the like button on the way out if you have not already. I hope you guys all have a great weekend. If I do not see you guys before then, if you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye, guys.